Welcome to the Atlantico podcast, where we talk about the science behind the Atlantico project, the Atlantic Ocean, and the human adventures experienced along the way. Here, we have conversations with guests from around the world who work together so that we can better understand, manage, and protect the ocean. So let's embark on the journey of Atlantico and discover the world that lies above and beneath the surface of the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. On today's episode, I have the pleasure to welcome Siggy Gruber, who is here to talk to us about the overall context within which Atlantico, our project, exists. As you probably know, Atlantico is a project funded under the Horizon 2020 program. H2020, as we call it, is an extensive European research and innovation framework and is funded by the European Commission. Within this framework, there's a wealth of research currently ongoing on the Atlantic Ocean under the umbrella of the All Atlantic flagship portfolio. And we are here today to understand more about the context that led to the design of this flagship where Atlantico sits and also to discuss what the future holds for the All Atlantic approach. So Siggy, welcome to the podcast. I am very excited for our conversation today. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me and I'm really honored to be part of this podcast series. Excellent, thank you so much. And before we get into the hard subject of today's episode, we do like to start each episode by getting to know our guests so we can understand their journey and their connection to the ocean. So could you tell us how it all started for you, where your connection to the ocean start? but also what your journey has been like to get where you are today and doing what you do. Yeah, I, but first of all, on a personal level, let me tell you that I love the Mediterranean Sea, to swim in the sea, also to swim in lakes. Swimming is regenerating me. It provides me with energy. So my emotional connection to the ocean, seas and waters is very strong. That's why I also care for it. But my professional connection to the ocean and sea started as part of my work in the European Commission, in the Director General for Research and Innovation. I worked for more than 30 years for the European Commission. So I was responsible for international science and innovation cooperation with all Americas back in 2012. And that is when I started to have the first discussions with my counterparts in Canada, United States, Brazil, to focus also on marine research cooperation as part of our joint international cooperative activities. And this led to the successful signing, actually, of the Galway Statement. And I will come later back to this. And in 2014, I had the privilege to create a unit within the Director General, which brought together all the different research streams related to ocean and seas. So ecosystem management, fisheries, aquaculture, plastic in the ocean, ocean literacy, the nexus climate and ocean, etc. And together with my colleagues and many enthusiastic stakeholders, and of course with the full support of my hierarchy in the Commission, particularly my director, John Bell, we were able to consolidate marine research in Horizon 2020 and in its different work programs and fund a variety of necessary and interesting research and innovation projects. We built also up a strong interface between research and innovation and policy making. And together with my colleagues, we managed to launch many relevant sea basin initiatives, like the one on the Atlantic, but also in the Mediterranean, in the Baltic, and in the Black Sea. And finally, we launched the Ocean and Waters Mission, one of the five big novelties of the five new EU missions, which is now being rolled out and which will be a game changer in Europe and globally for contributing to restore our ocean, our seas and inland waters by 2030. And having reached a certain age, I re retired officially end of 2020 from the Commission, but I continue to work on a voluntary basis as what is called an active senior advisor. 
I still follow in particular the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance and of course the AU mission Restore Our Ocean and Waters by 2030. So please, please let me stress that I'm not representing officially anymore the European Commission but I'm here on a personal basis. And we thank you for it. It's uh, it's really an honor to have you. You have played a, a crucial role to, to bring so many of the projects that uh, focus on, on the different regions uh, of the ocean. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, you mentioned it also, we're going to talk about those uh, very important statements. Uh, so can you tell us about the Galway and also the Bellum statements? Thank you for this question. So the European Union's integrated maritime policy coordinates fragmented marine policies at the EU level and establishes sea basin specific strategies that oversee cooperation, not only within Europe, but also with our neighbors or international partner countries. So the Atlantic Maritime Strategy and its subsequent action plans, one was adopted in 2013, the other one in 2020, are really the implementing arm of the integrated maritime policy for the Atlantic. And this Atlantic strategy is relevant because it gives the mandate to the Commission to reach out for partners in the Atlantic Ocean for further collaboration. And part of the success of the EU's Atlantic strategy, of course, depends also on international cooperation because the, the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, doesn't really know any borders. So the first step in implementing this internationalization of the Atlantic strategy was the Galway Statement. It was a North-North coalition on ocean science and technology signed between Canada, the European Union and the United States of America back in 2013. The second step, consequently, was the development of a South-South framework. And this was joined, this South-South framework, joined Brazil and South Africa in bilateral ocean science and technology arrangements. And it was actually informed by the Commission on the outcomes of the Galway Statement. And finally, South and North were bridged by the signing of the Belém Statement in 2017 between the EU, Brazil and South Africa, setting up the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. We also had consequently then bilateral arrangements with Capo Verde, with Argentina and with Morocco. So, the South, this, this really different frameworks, first of all, they were generated by a large bottom-up science-driven activity, by engaging the stakeholders, by listening to them, by listening what are the challenges, where should the priorities lie, where should we cooperate with partner countries. And then, of course, it was signed off by policymakers at the highest level. But uh, if I look at the Belém statement, the purpose is really to improve the collaborative scientific efforts in the Atlantic Ocean and this sustainably cooperate on marine science research and innovation. And it really highlights the mutual benefit on linking the different research activities in the South Atlantic, in the Southern Ocean with those of the North Atlantic. And it also leverages from already existing endeavors, such as the Benguela Current Commission. I think this is all familiar to you because uh, the Atlant Eco Project had also contact along the Atlantic and also with uh, different uh, commissions. The aim of the statement is really to promote and facilitate human capital development, promote scientific exchange, provide a platform and opportunity for scientific and technological cooperation, which really results in joint activities, which are shared, which are based on open data, on the fair principles. That it's a model really for a coordinated and partnership approach along and across the Atlantic to work to deliver results 
which are really necessary for the communities. And it also, the statement also talks about connecting ocean and climate change, ocean and food, oceans and energy systems, as well as the dynamic of the Atlantic Ocean, and its interconnected circulation system from Antarctica to the Arctic. And this is really a systems approach, which now has also been further developed and which is a conditio sine qua non, I think, for a successful implementation of any scientific event, endeavor to really tackle the challenges we all face. Yes, indeed. Uh, very interesting. Thank you for that, uh, for that information. And it is within this context that um, in the European Commission and in the Horizon 2020 framework, there were some calls for proposals which were designed and has funded some many projects. So, so much research is ongoing and funds projects such as Atlantico. So could you tell us a little bit about that uh, All Atlantic portfolio and the types of research that is being done at the moment? Sure. <laughs> so first of all, research projects receive European funds to really align with the objectives of the Galway and Belém statements and contribute to the implementation of the All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance. All projects had to include a significant participation and very closely cooperate with Atlantic partners from Argentina to Canada, passing through South Africa, Brazil, Capo Verde, Morocco, the United States and others. So this was really an eligibility criteria. It was a kind of really targeted call to support the implementation of these two signed of agreements. If we specifically look at the Belém statement, it includes a series of proposed outcomes, such as uh, better monitoring and forecasting capacities, or improved safety at sea, human health and well-being, sustainable use of marine resources, new and emerging technologies to service societal needs, looking into new value change, and, of course, also promote ocean-engaged citizens through enhanced ocean literacy activities. So the common areas of interest agreed and outlined in the Belém Statement also informed the drafting of the EU Horizon 2020 work programme. And the EU has invested in more than 40 projects with over 250 million euros for cooperation. And with the support as well of two coordination and support actions, one was the AURA and the other one was the ANCOR project, which is still running, the Alliance has also facilitated the networking of more than 1,000 research teams. And I mean, if I, I give you a couple of examples, uh, Atlantos was one of the really projects which was kickstarted in 2015 to look really at uh, a global ocean observing system for the Atlantic. And it, uh, after it finished as a project, it now continues as a program. There are projects like the Blue Action and the So Chic, which have been also keen in, in improving the knowledge by combining observational and modeling approaches over the Atlantic and respectively the, Ar the Arctic and the Southern Ocean. There are others like the project Applicate. And of course, there are the so-called, what we call the Belém Statement FAR project, which Atlantico is part of it. But we also have Mission Atlantic, I Atlantic, Tri Atlas, MERSIS, which was previously. So there are so many of these projects, and it is actually so important to cooperate with the projects and to establish the very important interfaces and see where is a possibility to transfer the knowledge, but also to take advantage of what other projects produce already in really in order to establish this cohort, this big portfolio of project deliverables, which are so much needed for 
tackling, as I said before, the challenges that we face in the Atlantic. I always say there is so much space for everyone to work on the Atlantic. There shouldn't be really competition. On the contrary, there needs to be really enhanced cooperation. There should be indeed, and uh, I am privileged to know quite a lot of the other projects, uh, managers or or researchers or coordinators, and and we do get together uh, once a month to try and, as you say, cooperate rather than compete on on the arena. And it's a a great team to be part of. And if we now look uh, a little bit more closely at Atlantico, You were with us for our launch back in September 2020 and have been following our progress via social media or through events that we have shared. And from your point of view, what are the key aspects of Atlantico that will help to address the objectives fixed, as you mentioned earlier? And what would your recommendations be to make sure that we have as big an impact as possible? Now, first of all, of course, you have your project proposal with uh, a signed contract and you have to work on the deliverables. <laughs> so yes, so that course. is really, <laughs> <laughs> that is, uh, but from what I know about your projects and its different activities, and also based on feedback of your very attentive and proactive project officer Gonzalo at the research executive agency of the commission. The Atlantic project in the first months of its implementation has already had an impact on various sectors. Let me just uh, uh, mention really a few. But first of all, of course, you have contributed to implement the Belém statement because you have embraced it, you know, I think, in its integrity by creating a new scientific community involving Europe, South Africa, Brazil, the United States, Argentina, Namibia, Senegal, and other countries. Secondly, These different scientific cooperation activities are based on a first wave of multidisciplinary scientific studies, studies, which created a new unifying framework for assessing and forecasting. And you used a combination of socioeconomic, oceanographic, ecological, and biological information. I would I would dare to say it's not only multidisciplinary, but it is also transdisciplinary. Thirdly, your capacity building program, including the secondments, the joint supervision, the workshops, the professional training activities, they are really of utmost importance. It has contributed to the improvement of the professional skills of several experts, You have really trained a totally new cohort of over 40 interdisciplinary scientists and marine professionals. And I'm sure you coined them for their future professional development. So I think this is really very, very interesting. In terms of observational capacities, you also have uh, established until now and started to disseminate widely advanced standards to be used for monitoring the health status of the Atlantic microbiome, including the monitoring of microplastic, which is also very, very important. And the construction of sensors and prototypes, I understood it's almost finished now. And that will be very important because it will lay down the foundations for the implementation of the systematic sustainable monitoring through the organization of the ocean sampling days. And it's also important really to see what are the risks from pathogens and toxic algae. Finally, it has you have also connected imaging and sequencing centers in Europe, South Africa and Brazil to enhance the standardization and the knowledge transfer, which is so important. The knowledge transfer, I think, is really key when cooperating with countries in Africa. And with this, you go out from the project work, and this could potentially and hopefully in future lead to the future establishment of joint programs. You have created several databases, which are equally as well important. So maybe finally, you you have con- or you are contributing to uncover and to better understand the DNA 
of the Atlantic Ocean. And last but not least, I think what is really and what ha has been really inspiring is what you did with your expedition when the Tara microbiome expedition took off and you started to travel around all the countries of the southern part of the Atlantic. So with your different outreach events that you organized, you really also reached a new cohort of ocean engaged and you developed this ocean engaged citizens. And I think this is something where you should continue really to put a lot of effort because one important issue is in addition to the scientific results, but we must ensure that the results are brought back to the communities, that people who are in need of the results use them, they deploy them, they are part of it, but they can only be part of, of that process if they understand the importance for them, the importance of scientific evidence data, for example, but also the importance to use and deploy those solutions. So I hope that you continue to really further develop these outreach activities. You also have been instrumental of linking or of giving birth to the Global Ocean Biomolecular Observing Network, which is an endorsed program of the UN Decade of Ocean Science. So this as well, again, this interface between what you do on the Atlantic, what you do with Atlantico as a Horizon 2020 funded EU project, you contribute also successfully to the UN Decade of Ocean Science. I would like to see, this is a wish from my side, that uh, the Twitter account that you have is really well connected with the Tara Ocean. It, it is partly, but I think that the Tara Ocean Twitter account has so much more outreach opportunities and you can really bring it back and widely disseminate. So this is something I, from my side, I would suggest for generating an even broader societal impact. Thank you so much for, for this feedback and uh, indeed, you know, trying to, to reach as many people as possible is is a big goal. It's one of our aims. Uh, we are carrying on more of our flagship expeditions with more port calls, more events that involve the public and policy makers and all the other stakeholders. So um, all these activities are are ongoing and will be still in the future. And as we get more and more results, we'll, um, we'll make everything possible to share them with uh, as many people as possible. Um, and maybe finally, if we want to look ahead and discuss what we can expect for future research, there was an important meeting which took place in Washington last July, where another statement was discussed and signed. So could you tell us about that and what is to come for the Atlantic at a global scale? Yes, indeed. The, the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Declaration was signed in Washington, D.C. on 13th of July, exactly five years after the Belém Statement was signed. So, historical date. And the signing really of the 2013 Galway Statement and the 2017 Belay Statement have cemented this collaboration. So it was signed, it was in a, in a big high-level event hosted by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and the U.S. Department of State. And it does provide a vision for the next decade of this already successful multilateral cooperation, but it really um, should give it a boost. It needs to link it as well to the UN decade. It needs to link it to the future, to the, to the rolling out of the EU mission that I mentioned before. And it needs as well to continue 
to be the model for enlarged cooperation in ocean research and innovation in the world, because the Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance is really a first of this kind. So from tackling pollution to ecosystem protection and restoration, passing through ocean observation, the blue economy, which now is a concept not only well known in the European Union, but also example, in Canada, United States, Brazil, South Africa, the circularity, uh, the sustainable fisheries and aquaculture, all this is really together moving forward on its journey from a healthier and treasured Atlantic Ocean from pole to pole. What is important is also to strengthen the connections between Southern Ocean and Antarctica and North Atlantic and the Arctic. As I said previously, we have to take a systems approach. And why? Because we are confronted with a climate crisis, with the sea level rise, with extreme weather, with a pollution crisis, huh? carbon, chemical, noise, plastic pollution. We also are confronted with a food crisis and a biodiversity crisis. And all this together, there is no doubt, it requires systemic, collective and coordinated action. And it was interesting in the meeting in Washington, the outcomes were really, let me summarize them, focusing on for the future. We need to continue to work for an open, and inclusive community. So also this notion to be open to anyone can join the Alliance, whether they have signed or not signed any declaration. It needs to be inclusive. The work needs to move from niche to norm. We have to create a new focused roadmap, an implementation plan with inclusiveness as a priority. Because as it grows now in scope, there will be an increase in needed efforts, in new demands, which can only be tackled if we build up on the mutual trust, which has really united us until now, which over the 10 years we were able to establish. And we need also to put the all in the all Atlantic. So there should be a focus on all waters, inland and marine, all systems, all knowledge, scientific knowledge, but also indigenous knowledge, all forms of innovation, very important, the aspect of social innovation, which needs really to be promoted, all forms of learning, experimental, transformational, inter, multi and transdisciplinary, all forms of communication, and we need as well all generations. It is going to be very, very important to bridge, to really engage in an intergenerational dialogue between established, very experienced scientists and the young generation. We need to put a focus on capacity building, on training, really allowing these young people to come in because there is no other way I think, to go. So this is uh, what was decided. And of course, for us, this for the, European, for the European Commission, for the European Union, the newly signed declaration is going to be also a big vehicle for rolling out the EU mission with a particular focus on the Atlantic Arctic Mission Lighthouse which is a locally based lighthouse, which focuses on the objective on ecosystem management, biodiversity of the mission. So there will be a lot of research opportunities in future. So let's really look into a bright future, continue to work together, building on what has been achieved so far, rolling it out, bringing new communities in, and also really training many, many more young people to care for the ocean. And I think Atlantico has all the, the potential to continue to work in this sense. And I also wish all the 
partners and uh, the different uh, associated partners very good luck for the next phase of your project implementation thank you thank you so much for for your words and we are delighted to to contribute to to the the objectives of um, of all the, the statements, but also look forward to contributing in the future as well. You mentioned a lot of uh, the other projects that are ongoing at the moment and, and past ones. So in future episodes of the podcast, I will be speaking to colleagues from these other research projects that are funded under the same scheme as Atlantico but also maybe further further afield. So make sure to come back and discover all of the amazing work that is being done every day so that we can reach the objectives that we have discussed today. And to finish, I would like really to thank you for your time today, Siggy. It has been a pleasure to talk to you and a lot of information shared by you. And I am sure it will have been very interesting for our listeners. Thank you. We hope that you've enjoyed today's episode and look forward to seeing you next time. You can follow the Atlantico project on our website on www.atlantico.eu and you can also find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All the links and information on the project and on today's episode is in the show notes. Atlantico is a project funded under Horizon 2020, a European Union research and innovation programme.